I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. Can you feel it? Winter's coming to SoFlo, and I have the perfect recipes for its arrival today on SoFlo Taste. This is South Florida. It's where I live and work. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. South Florida is more than sun, sand, and sea. It's a lifestyle of fashion, sound, culture, and of course, food. Food with taste from all over the world. Join me as we celebrate the food of South Florida and the people who love it. Join me as we experience SoFlo Taste. Good morning and welcome to SoFlo Taste. I'm in our home here at JA World in Coconut Creek. I'm guessing that many of you moved to SoFlo from somewhere else. After all, 906 people moved to Florida daily and many of those people probably came here from a northern climate and many of those people came here because of our southern climate. So I thought it would be fun to remember some of those foods of winter, real winter. So let's get cooking. The first thing we're going to make today is pork. A lot of people think that cooking pork means very high heat and then turning it lower. I personally think that the slower and lower you cook pork, the more delicious and juicy it will become. Today, I'm making you a pork butt, B-U-T-T, or pork shoulder. You can get it bone in or you can get it bone out. I love cooking things with bone in. Sometimes a pork shoulder with a bone in is a little bit harder to find. This one we found at Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. This is a boneless, bone out pork shoulder. Um, it's beautiful. It's well marbled. If you take a look at this one, it has great marbleization. It is a large piece of meat, so it does take a little while. The name pork butt doesn't mean that it comes from this part. It, it actually, pork butt is shoulder. It comes from the higher region, uh, the shoulder region of the pig. I cured this for a small amount of time and then I roasted it for a really long period of time. And because we're cooking it at such a low heat, set your timers, make sure somebody's around about seven to eight hours and they can pull it out of the oven for you or maybe when you get home from work. I decided not to go with too many spices. I decided to go kind of straightforward. So I have some brown sugar, some kosher salt, and some ground black pepper that I ground myself in a spice grinder. The first thing, you know what? Before I put the spice mixture on, I'm gonna score it. Let's go ahead and do some diagonal score marks onto just the skin part of the pork. Don't go too far down, make sure your knife is nice and sharp and don't go through to the meat just on the fat. I score almost everything that has skin on it, including fish, uh, duck, not chicken though, too thin a skin. So this is called a crosshatch because we went one way and now we're making little cross hatches. Okay, about the cure. I'm gonna start on the bottom. Wherever it's open, make sure you get a nice amount of your sugar and your salt and your pepper. And then rub it in there. Flip them over. And then into the cross hatch, I always rub my spice mixture in those little openings. And that's really what flavors the meat really well. You see the cross hatches? You really wanna get in, in here, in those little openings that touches the flesh. Okay, so that's that. Just so you know, this, so this one is overnight with the cure and you can see how the meat is um, releasing a bit of moisture because of the salt. And what this is doing is not only imparting flavor, but it's also helping to tenderize this piece of pork, which is great. Let me show you what it looks like when it is done cooking for eight hours in my home kitchen. It's really beautiful. I put it over a piece of parchment paper because um, the weight of the shoulder is so great that it could possibly start going through the opening of the, uh, the metal on the racks. It cooked at 250 degrees. Look how beautiful it is. The next thing I'm gonna do, and you can cook it a day ahead, which is kind of smart, right? You don't have to wait for it all day for when you're serving it to your family or friends. So I cooked it last night, and then um, I had it in the fridge. I let it come to room temperature again, and now we're going in a really hot oven. 
So at home, I would go into 500 degrees. So this is going to finish the texture that we're looking for, the crispy skin that we want. So I'm gonna wait for this to get nice and crisp and then I'll pull it out of the oven and we'll make a sauce with all of the renderings and the juices that have, of course, uh, dripped down to the bottom of our pan. Come right back, we'll check on that. I have two more beautiful winter recipes for you here on SoFlo, so we'll see you in a few. SoFlo Taste will return right after this. Now back to Let It So Flow, Let It So Flow, Let It So Flow show. Okay, so um, pork is ready, actually. So before I move on to my next dish, which I'm excited about, let's pull the pork out. All right, so when it's this hot, be really careful because as it drips, you not only have fat, but you also have the juices of the pork which we're gonna use. So let me lift the rack up, place the pork down, and we're just gonna let this rest. But look how beautiful it is. This is a combination of fat and juice. I'm gonna take away about three quarters of it. I'm gonna pour it into this little bowl right here. So then put this down on a burner. So to this, we're gonna make a little broth for that pork. So I've got onions, I have celery, I have peeled and chopped carrots, and I have a little bit of shallot and whole garlic cloves. Just mix that up for a couple of seconds. Then I'm going to add a little bit of dry white wine to the pan. And once that comes down, go ahead and add chicken stock. Great place to add chicken stock. And if you have a little chicken broth, you can add that. But just make sure it is uh, no sodium if you're using chicken broth. We're going to let that come down, make ourselves a really nice sauce, strain it, and we'll serve that with our pork. But moving on, I wanted to show you another dish that I love. We're making a wheat berry salad. So this is wheat berry. It's so good for you. It's filled with fiber and iron. It is the whole kernel of wheat is what this is. And you just cook it in some water until it's cooked. It takes about 30 minutes to cook it. So that's what that is. We strain it and we let it cool completely. I decided to take a little bit of this beautiful Tuscan kale and you just basically take it off of the stem and you of course can use these stems, cook them or keep them raw, slice them up nice and thin or you can just use the leaves but I like to use both. And I'm just gonna cook these really quickly. I'm gonna cut them up a little bit small, not too small, and cook them with some garlic and some shallots and add them to the salad. So here I have a saute pan. I'll add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to that pan, just a little bit. And we're not looking for a very long cook. It's just to soften it just a little bit, adding a little bit of the shallot and just a little bit of garlic, maybe as much as a clove. I'm also going to season that kale with a little bit of kosher salt and a little bit of black pepper. We decided to add squash, and I'm using a squash that I'm not sure you've ever seen. It's called a kabocha. This one down here is the whole. This is what it looks like when it's cut in half, and it's a delicious squash. We cut it nice and small. We tossed it in olive oil, salt, and pepper, threw it into a 375 degree oven. It takes about 25 minutes to cook when it's cut this small. So this is one of the squash we used. The other squash we used was a butternut squash. So you have the two colors, 
it's fine if you just want to use one. Obviously, they're all delicious, but they definitely add different textures and flavors when you switch it up a little bit. I'm going to add the squash to the bowl, the mixing bowl. I'm going to add the other squash to the bowl. And I'll tell you what, why don't you all come right back because I think by that time my sauce on my pork will be done and we can go ahead and finish up this salad together while we meet what I hear is a very interesting guest coming up. Come right back. I'm design expert Elena Capra. Stay tuned for SoFlo Home Project following this edition of SoFlo Taste. You're watching SoFlo Taste, the number one food show in all of South Florida. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste. We're here at JA World in Coconut Creek. For information about JA World and what it does for our children, go to jasouthflorida.org or call 954-979-7100. And joining me now is someone who knows about this wonderful place as well. This is Gino Santorio. Hey, Gino. Hi, how are you? Thanks <laughs> he for is the me. president and CEO of Broward Health. Yes. That's uh, quite a position. It is. Thank you for having me. And uh, we're happy to be a sponsor and partner with JA for the last 10 years. You're one of their favorite <laughs> Thank partners. Thank you. Um, so I'll tell you what, I'm going to tell them what I'm doing. And as I do it, you speak to what you all do here at JA World. Let me tell you all really quick. This sauce is ready, the one that we made uh, with the pork juices. So I'm going to strain that. This is the gorgeous pork that is cooked and rather lovely. Perfect. Gina was saying it smells really good in here. And this is the salad. I gently sauteed the kale with those shallots and the garlic. This is just lemon vinaigrette, which is three to one or four to one, depending on how much acid you like. Oil to lemon and salt and pepper. And then I'm gonna top it with pomegranates and goat's cheese. So if you want to speak to what you all do here. Broward Health has been, uh, we're local in the community. We have five hospitals and 30 outpatient centers, but we've been a part of JA for the past 10 years. We take their uh, students in, we do internships. The curriculums that, that they do here through JA really complements everything that they're doing. So it's a phenomenal program. I really encourage everyone to check it out. Have you been here before? Believe it or not, this is my first time here. Wow. So we Isn't did a little bit of a tour. We have three storefronts, two in the business centers, uh, one in the financial district over there. And it's amazing what they do. They yeah. have the students come in and you know, they each, they apply for a job, they get assigned a job, and then they go through the normal fun day that we experience on a daily basis. <laughs> right. So, but it's a great program for them. I just, so. I'm always amazed at how prepared they are to work. Yes. It's incredible. Yeah. There's um, a, it's a different generation. They're, they're definitely ready for it. <laughs> so these are two kinds of squash, some kale and wheat berries, tossing in the lemon vinaigrette, and then delicious pomegranates. Love pomegranates. Uh, do you like goat cheese? I love goat cheese. Oh, good. So I'm sprinkling a little bit of goat cheese over the top. You ever heard of sumac? No, I have not. Smell it. It comes from a berry. It's a Middle Eastern spice, and it has like a tartness to it. And there you have it. So that is a lovely winter salad of wheat berry. And that looks delicious. you and I are gonna make carbonara. I've made carbonaras in many different ways. I've done the classic way on the show. I'm gonna show you my way to okay. make carbonara, uh, the old Mishi's way. And I actually brought fresh pasta with me. Ooh. Yeah, so we're gonna make some fresh pasta. This is fettuccine pasta. And of course you can make this with any kind of your favorite noodles. So we already rendered some bacon. So this is little pieces of crispy bacon. So this is an applewood smoked bacon, cut really small and then rendered in a pan, which basically just means throw it in a pan, kind of a medium heat, let all the fat come out. They come nice and crispy. Take a little bit of the fat off, but this is gonna be all the fat that we're cooking with today. Rather than adding any oil or butter to the pan, I add a crispy, uh, thin slices on a piece of paper in the oven, nice and low, and it becomes, you wanna try? How long did you have that in there? It only cooks for about 30 minutes on like 250, and it's kind of like a potato chip. Yeah. That's delicious. I know. So that's gonna be our that topping. It's fun, right? Yeah. And then, I'll be over here eating this if <laughs> anyone needs me. <laughs> and then I cut uh, little grape tomatoes in half. Cook these at about 325, 350 until they look like raisins. So these are gonna be little pops of flavor in our pasta as well. All right, so I have a lot going on, but it all comes together beautifully in the pan. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the pasta in here. 
every once in a while, give it a little toss, and it's gonna cook really fast, but we're gonna also make this really quickly. A spoonful of shallots, which is pretty much like one shallot. Mm -hmm. A couple of cloves of very minced garlic. We're gonna right now add a little bit of white wine that I have here. Very nice. Just to deglaze the pan. Then I have a little bit of chicken stock, warm, right here, to also deglaze the pan. So we're lifting up all the fats that were on the bottom from the pork. Let's give the pasta a little stir so it doesn't stick together. Okay, next we're going to add um, the illegal ingredient, which is the heavy cream, which <laughs> um, the real chefs never do it, but I'm gonna do it because like I said, I'm not making a real carbonara, I'm making my carbonara. Okay, here's all the fun stuff, right? Do you want to throw some peas? Do you like peas? I love peas. Okay, do you want to throw peas in there? Sure. Um, throw some of those tomatoes in the pan, please. I'm going to keep stirring my pasta. Where they fall, they fall. This, Don't is, be, uh, this is where, uh, it's perfect. if the dish gets messed up, I'll Never. take the credit for it. Grab the tomatoes. So tell me a little bit about Broward Health. So we, um, we're a safety net hospital, so we care for the northern two-thirds of Broward County. Okay. Regardless of your ability to pay, but we're some of the leaders in terms of advancement. So we're working down, uh, utilizing, you know, a lot of people do these DNA tests now. Yes. 23andMe, figure out what kind of food diet is best for me, how sure. I metabolize medicine, drugs. We're going down that road because I think it's really the future of medicine. So we're trying to do a few, um, we're trying to disrupt the, the continuum of healthcare. So things like that, putting stations out there in terms of being able to do telemedicine combined with uh, pharmaceutical vending machines so you can get wow. access to, to things everywhere regardless of your ability to travel. Do you have um, a background in health? Believe it or not, no. I was a finance no. political guy. I got into a healthcare opportunity through finance a long time ago. I fell in love with it. So it's oh. really an opportunity on a non-clinician side to still be able to help people. But Just amazing to learn, no, yes, yeah, so this is Sant Andre, which is one of my favorite cheeses. It is a triple cream, but it's mm. not as melty as um, brie would be. Mm -hmm. And this is how I use, instead of That's butter, really good. I know, <laughs> I use That's it instead really of butter to thicken the sauce. Then I add a little bit of the water from the pasta, as well as the pasta. Oh, it's a little trick. Do you use the water from pasta? I do. You do, yeah. My mother's a fan of that. My father's not a fan of that. Two okay. different pieces of Italy. Really? I don't know why. Yeah, but it's interesting. I think it keeps it from sticking and it gives a little flavor. Well, you know, it's a natural thickener because you have all the flour released yeah. from the pasta into the water. You're adding that naturally into your sauce, and what you're doing is you're actually thickening your sauce naturally. This is what it looks like. Um, go ahead and use your hands, please. This is Reggiano okay. Parmesan. And this is pecorino, and I love having a little bit of both. All right. So add a little bit to the pasta. I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh chopped parsley for a little bit of color. This looks amazing already. Thank you, thank you. Lastly, a little bit of that bacon goes mm. in as much as you like. I do like bacon. If you were at home, would you just pour the whole thing in? I probably. <laughs> Would no, probably uh, no, right. uh, no. Would I'd you? probably do about half, and then I take the other half and go hide in the in the in the back pantry and eat it. I hate to say it's a great <laughs> Scooby snack, by the way. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's, just, it's a wonderful snack. All right. So then we're gonna you hold it, and I will um, grab onto it. Okay. So thank you for that, Gino. A little Delicious. bit higher up. Beautiful. Let all the sauce fall right on it. You don't have to tell me twice. Delish. Delicious. Okay. Go ahead and garnish with the crispy prosciutto that you have at that end. This is um, an unbelievably looking dish. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not going to leave without trying this. Good. I'm going to tell you. Good. So. Well, there you go. Put it down and go for it. Phenomenal. And thank you for everything you and your company do for, for JA World. Thank you for Broward Health thank and you for so you. Much. And, and I thank think, you for uh, your contribution. It's amazing. And, and what a great example you are for these children. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see if we can get a little bit of everything on this fork. Yes. All right, let's try it. Mm. Yeah? It's okay? Need more bacon? No, that is phenomenal. Oh, good. Yay! That is phenomenal. I feel sorry for the people at home that can't eat this. They can. They can make it. Go make it right now. 
Okay, come right <laughs> back. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Even though our thermometers may only drop a few degrees as winter approaches, these recipes will bring back wonderful memories of sledding, ice skating, building snowmen, shoveling the sidewalk, shoveling the driveway, and jump starting your car. While some of those memories are wonderful, try my recipes and let me know what you think. Thanks for joining me today. Next week, I'm starting the holiday parade to end the year. First up, Hanukkah. I'll give you some of my perfect recipes to celebrate the festival of life. I hope you will add them to your family's favorite. Now let's get a look in from design expert, Elena Capra. Good morning, Elena. What's on Sofla Home Project today? Hi, Michelle. This is a ball to a secret room in the basement of a historic Florida home. Yes, I said basement. Coming up on Sofla Home Project, we travel back in time to the Roaring Twenties and tour the annual Holiday Decor Show House at the Deering Estate. Thanks, Elena. Looks like something we'll love. So taste buds, that's this week's show. I'll see you next week. Mwah. Goodbye and good taste. Let it so flow.